<laughs> oh, it's a Saturday. And I'm very emotional this morning for some reason. I feel, I feel tears already filling my eyes. The weekend feels much more like a weekend now that I'm back at school. And I think that my emotions are stemming from the fact that I can rejoice in a little bit of a break. I think that'll do me some good over the next couple of days. Hmm. So the plan for today, um, I do have a little bit of schoolwork to accomplish. A couple of things that I want to do in order to prepare myself well for the week ahead. So I will be spending a little bit of time at my desk. But otherwise, I anticipate the day will hold a lot of reading. I'm feeling like sitting down and drinking tea and reading. And I think today I'll probably finish this book that I'm going through. It's The Book of Longings by Sumant Kidd. Um, I'm reading it for a book club. And um, our book club is meeting over Zoom, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. Already, wow, well, yeah, already next Sunday we're meeting. So I'd like to finish this book. Um, and then maybe today I'll pick up my new book. I didn't even think of that, but maybe I'll pick up the book that we are reading for next month. That might be nice. And otherwise, I want the feeling of the day, the emotion of the day, my word of the day, to be patience. I've been really hard on myself the last few days, particularly at night, when all of my thoughts are jumbled and... <laughs> he is not... Max, why are you just walking around? You're making so much noise, boo-boo. <laughs> what is up with you? I'm on camera. You gotta keep those feet. Quiet. Okay. Come up. <laughs> Hi. You're so silly. Patience is something that I've been lacking the last couple of days, and patience is mostly directed towards me and my own thoughts and my own beliefs about myself and the dark hours of the night. I've been struggling with my body image lately. I've been struggling with my work ethic. I've been struggling with the ebbs and flows that I experience on a daily basis and I need to, I want to, and I will refocus on what I need to do um, to accept myself as I come on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so today I want to reflect on that a little bit.
I think part of the reason that I've been struggling a little bit with feeling um, comfortable and confident in my skin, um, aside from the weight gain that I've had since the start of um, the pandemic, it's not just about the physical aspect of what is what is occurring to my body, because I think I can accept that um, much easier than I can accept the the um, the emotional changes that have kind of come along with it as well. And this past year has been about a lot of spending a lot more time with myself and in myself. Um, and some days I really appreciate that. I feel a really deep connection to my values and my virtues and I feel highly spiritual and I can look beyond myself and see the beauty that is not just um, my life but the existence of all life together. Um, and then there are other days where my inner reflection shows me the cracks and the scars and the trauma that has come um, into my life throughout the entirety of my life and not, not just within the past year and um, spending a lot of time in solitude um, has opened up those doorways and I'm just not always willing to look beyond and see and see what's inside. And so I think the last few days I've really been um, really been working with that. And I think a big part of it is often how I identify, who I am, what I want to be seen as, and what I want myself to be, and a lot of that stems back to um, comparing myself and judging myself and thinking that my life should look a certain way based on how other people are living theirs. But then I go on my computer, <laughs> on my laptop, and you can see there I'm watching a video. Um, I just found another YouTuber yesterday. Her name is, her channel name is Hannah Lee Duggan. Um, and she is another person who I think would <laughs> make an amazing friend um, who lives in a van um, or who lived in a van for extended periods of time and who just purchased a cabin um, this past year and the values that she holds and the important things in her life, the simplicity of it all, um, really reminds me that that's what I connect with as well. And it can be very hard to, to fall astray of those feelings when I'm in a city and the extent of my travels is from my home to my workplace and then back or to the grocery store and back. And um, there isn't much opportunity right now to be exploring and so it's easy to lose touch with that adventuring side of myself even though I know it's there and it's videos like this that remind me that it's there because it feels like a spark is ignited within me. I feel so blessed to be able to connect virtually um, with people who hold the same values as me and who are making their lives work in the ways that they want them to work and it just provides in inspiration to, for me as well to realize that yes I'm following a very traditional path of academics of going through and finishing my undergrad and getting a master's degree however that doesn't dull the part of myself who also would love to spend extended periods of time living in a van um, and parts of myself who would love to travel some more and experience not just the world but also just the surrounding areas around me um, and uncover the beauty that is, you know, just within hours of myself and not, you know, days away. And it reminds me that there, there can be an intermixing of academia and science with the love of art and the love of literature that I have. And I've really been pondering that lately and that's, that makes me emotional because I really feel that connection of the side of me that is studious and loves to embrace experimentation and research 
but that also connects with the side of myself who loves fantasy and dreamlands and who loves to imagine different lives and different universes and and to intermix those things even though one side may not be scientifically proven where the other side is all about proving scientifically that intermixing um, is the essence of me and it, it feels nice to honor that and to remember that when I can connect with like-minded people. Sunday now and this morning I'm feeling much more lively I am feeling a calmness inside of me whereas yesterday I felt butterflies in my stomach and I felt my heart beating very fast today all of that has been replaced with a sense of peace all in all I'm feeling much warmer than I did yesterday. I, I was about to say much better, but I'm trying to acknowledge that each of my feelings have their own place in me and that there aren't good or bad feelings. There are simply feelings and emotions. Um, and the best thing I can do is to learn how to describe them um, physiologically. So, so my feelings of anxiety often lead to the sensation of my heart maybe feeling like it's going to burst out of my chest, um, heat in my face, um, butterflies in my stomach. Sometimes it leads to tingling in my toes, feeling like my feet are cold. Um, and I'll often um, continuously move my feet, um, kind of as like a nervous, like a nervous movement. So being able to kind of describe each of those feelings without simply saying I'm anxious, but acknowledging the, the sensations that come along with that, um, I think has been really helpful to be able to unpack the negative connotation of the feeling and simply being able to acknowledge how I feel it in my body. Um, it also helps me to remember that everything I, I feel is connected. So, so my, my brain is connected to my body, obviously, but it's easy to forget and to disassociate the two. Um, so it's nice to be able to engage in the sensations behind how I'm feeling. So I, I encourage you to maybe try that next time you're feeling any sort of emotion. Um, see how your body reacts to it or how your body embodies it. What is it that your body does to, to heighten that feeling? I really encourage you to do that. It may feel really overwhelming at first because you'll notice things in your body that you maybe haven't noticed before, but over time you'll come to acknowledge, you'll come to feel those feel feel those sensations before maybe you even acknowledged how you're how you're feeling and you'll be able to calm yourself or you'll be able to acknowledge it in a way that doesn't let you spiral because often for me at least with my anxiety, um, it'll spiral. So I'll have a thought in my mind, which then leads to the bodily sensations, and then I, I allow myself to just fall into the pit of continuously, you know, feeling the anxiety instead of acknowledging it and letting it pass. I, I like feed myself into it. Um, so being able to acknowledge the sensations 
has helped me pull myself out of the darkness that is right in front of me that I often just let myself fall into. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so this morning I'm drinking a green tea. I just got this mug. It says, could this be any more of a mug? Um, <laughs> Um, Matthew Perry, the actor who plays Chandler Bing in Friends, um, he released a line of mugs and t-shirts and I think hats were also involved um, and they all said the same kind of thing, They're like could this be any more of a shirt? Could this be any more of a hat? I think there was a hat, maybe I'm wrong about the hat, but anyway, so I, I ended up ordering a mug and I'm drinking a green tea. The green tea is from um, a company in Ottawa actually. Um, sorry, if you can hear the squeaking in the back, that's Max playing with his new raccoon toy. Um, I'm drinking a green tea. Oh no! I don't think you saw what I just did, but... but anyways, whatever. <laughs> it's a loose leaf green tea. It's called Lucky Dragon. Um, it's from a company called Teeley, um, which is based out of Ottawa, actually. So yeah, so I wanted to support local, even though she's not quite as local anymore now that I'm about five hours away from Ottawa, but it is very good tea, I must say. <laughs> so I think I'm going to keep reading. <clears throat> Hello. You're being very obnoxious this morning. Where are you going? Why are you sniffing me? Do I smell bad? I do need to take a shower today, I know that. You are very sweet. Hello. Can you go do your own thing? No, you're just gonna hang out here. <clears throat> Mama's losing her voice. He's just looking at me like he expects something of me. I've already had him breakfast. I will be taking him <clears throat> on a WARK very shortly. There we go, he's playing with his toys again. Um, I have some laundry in the washing machine and in the dryer um, and I probably have about half an hour before I have to go pick that stuff up however I wanted to get started on a little bit of schoolwork I have a quiz in my uh, social psychology class that I have to do by tomorrow so I'd like to get that done today however I also have to finish um, this week's module uh, in order to complete that quiz so I'm gonna get started on that evening time now I'm sure you can tell um, the Sun sets here at about you know what actually today it only started getting dark probably around 545 and it's currently um, 615 so the lengthening of the days um, feels like such a blessing and I look forward to the continued lengthening I can't wait to be able to wake up at 630 in the morning and have light of day to greet me um, first thing right away 
the rest of the evening is going to be very calm. This whole day has been just very calm. I did some cleaning. I did some reading. I finished my book, The Book of Longings, and I would give it a 4.75 out of 5, I would say. The only part that I felt like um, de like diminished the marks a little bit was there was there was a stretch of the book where um, I was losing interest, feeling like, okay, this is a little tedious, let's keep going. But in the end, it set it up nicely for the for the final few chapters. Um, so I understand it was necessary, but I just lost some interest. Um, but it was an amazing book. I highly recommend it. It's about the, if you don't know, it's about the fictional life. It's, it's a historical fiction about what it would have been like for Jesus to have had a wife. And this book is about her and her name is Anna. And Sumon Kidd does an amazing job of creating this intricate character who is so strong and so powerful and she reminded me along with all the other strong female characters um, how important it is to have a voice especially in times when you feel like it's going to be quashed because obviously in the times when these women were around when Jesus was around women w w did not have a voice and they were silenced and they were um, they were treated so poorly and yet these characters were able to speak in their own ways whether it was through writing or through singing or through yelling or through arguing or through <laughs> and that's it was a really nice really 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 powerful read for me so i'm excited to discuss it with my book club next weekend um i don't think i'm going to start another full-length novel um in the meantime just because as soon as as soon as the meeting next Sunday, I'm going to hop into the next book, which is going to be Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Um, so I don't want to start anything in in between because all the books I have are quite, all the novels I have are quite lengthy that I haven't read yet. So you know what, actually, one sec. <laughs> I think I'm gonna maybe start this book. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. So it is The Death of the Moth and Other Essays by Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is mm, one of my homies. She's on my desk along with three other incredible women. This one is Virginia Woolf. This is um, Anne Sexton. This is Sylvia Plath. And this is Anais Nin, my inspirations. <laughs> they sit at my desk and they remind me to be a strong, powerful woman regardless of my mental health. Uh, so anyway, so I have this book that I'd like to go through. I got it at the thrift store a little while ago. So maybe, maybe I'll spend the next week. It's exactly a week until the book club. So maybe I'll spend the week going through this because it's nice and short and it's um, not a big commitment to read an essay as opposed to a full novel. So I think maybe I'll do that. Oh, the pages smell like dust and age and it smells like they hold a lot of promise. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling good. I feel, I don't quite feel ready to start the week yet. Um, I still need to sit and plan and organize at least my day tomorrow. Um, but I feel like I've rested nicely this weekend and I feel like I'm preparing myself well to hit the ground running once the week really starts tomorrow, the school week. <laughs> I'm gonna watch some more YouTube videos. I've been really, really, really craving um, connection that way lately. So right now I'm reading, or not reading, I'm watching um, Morgan Long. She ha creates such beautiful videos, um, just so sweet and gentle and um, really connecting with Huga. And yeah, I'm watching her video right now. But I've also been watching um, Isabel Page and Hannah Lee Duggan. Um, and then I also love a Canadian gal, a local Canadian gal um, named Kayla Nicholson. So yeah, there's just so many great people out in the world and I love that they're sharing their content with us. Um, and so I'm gonna be spending some time doing that. Then I'm gonna eat dinner and I'll probably play some Animal Crossing. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for coming along with me this weekend. It was an emotional one, it was a gentle one, it was one with not too much happening, which is okay every once in a while. <laughs> Thank you for watching everybody, I'll see you next time.